so as the ego not annihilated but as the ego expands more and more and more hmm, and loses its opaqueness greater and greater light of universality shines through and that little ego self, the individuality emerges away into universality imperceptibly because it is imbued already with the light of universality. Hmm. So it's like a school child uh, when he has done certain lessons in maths and gained the knowledge of the formulas that are required then the next formula would seem easy to him because the first three or four formulas he has mastered and then he goes on to the fifth formula of mathematics, algebra, whatever subject you can think of. And so that is what actually happens. You have reached the stage where you automatically merge away into universality. Hmm? and you are not conscious of merging. Hmm? Like the drop of water is not conscious of merging into the ocean, but it will really experience the vastness <coughs> that the little drop of water has now become, because it becomes the ocean. Hmm? The various structures in the drop of water are the same structures into the whole of the ocean. Let us say <coughs> molecular structure of the drop of water. So, when like meets like, there's no differentiation. And when there is no differentiation, there is no word as coping. Hmm? Coping only comes to into being uh, in your practical daily life, when you have to cope up with the kids you know, and their problems, like I saw uh, Iris's daughter Annelise running out because she heard the little child. And did you hear the little child? Yes, with awareness. Yeah. So she had to run out. And you've got to cope with the situation. And like that in daily living, many problems do arise that sort of uh, makes it hard for a person to cope. And for example, say, a husband is unfaithful to the wife. Mm -hmm. Now, how is she going to cope with this situation? Mm -hmm. From a wife, who so we might have had children and have lived for many years together, and the very proof of them having lived for many years together is because there has been a something, some bond at a grosser level or a subtler level that has brought them together and made them live with each other together for so many years. And suddenly some little, you know, fancy girl turns up that diverts his fancy. Hmm? But it will, I promise you, be temporary. It will never be permanent. Because if that man should discard his wife and take the new fancy one to be his wife, that is not going to last at all. Temporarily, yes, but the honeymoon days must pass. Yes. And uh, more people experience infatuation during honeymoon days than in all the days that follow. Because honeymoon days are filled with fun. You are dancing and dining and all the other things people do when they are on honeymoon. Hmm? You, the honey, and I'm the moon. And so, like that. <coughs> so that is why theologies of the world uh, advocated a certain standard of morality. 
Now, I do not preach of morality. With me, there are no do's and don'ts. Hmm? Because more harm has been done to this world with the do's and don'ts given out by theologians. Hmm? But what I teach is of purity. How pure am I? How much more pure can I become? and purer still, so that I do not harm myself and neither those for whom I am responsible. And many a time it requires great sacrifice to be able to do that. Like St. Augustine, you must have heard his famous prayer, O oh Lord, grant me chastity, but not today. <laughs> You see, so, what I'm trying to tell you, that there are many complications, hmm? home-wise, children-wise, biologically, there are complications, there are complications psychologically, hmm? and of course, the spirit is hidden behind the veils of our obsession. And obsession is a disease. And the very word disease means this is. You are not at ease. Never. In any compromising circumstance. You are never at ease. You bluff yourself if you think you are at ease. You see. So the man too has to cope with all this. He has to go through so many psychological changes within himself. If there are any divorced women in this world, uh, in this room, for example, and she gets married to another man, do you know the thoughts of the previous wife who will linger on in his mind for a long, long time. It will. Unless something very drastic had happened. It will linger on. So here the conflict begins. And here the striving and the stress <coughs> and the strain of the conflict has to be faced. And yet the second wife could be a Beautiful, wonderful woman. You see. Now, when we come to the word coping, it only, I've just given you this example at random. I know most of you are happy and together. And, but coping is a word applied to the worldly, daily circumstances. But it does not apply when the individuality of a person merges away in the universality. You are not merging into something which is foreign from you. You are universal as you are now. But it has not come to your cognition and definitely not to your realization that I am universal. And all these limitations that are imposed upon me are by my own doings. Hmm? So what I can do, I can undo. That should be the, the determination. And that brings about the purity within ourselves. And everything goes well. Everything. Yes. That is true responsibility in life. That is one way of merging into universality of self-realization that I've always been universal and what I've done now is thrown that individuality of mine which I thought there was 
But in reality, there was no individuality. Hmm? It is a fixture of the mind that makes you seem your individual. Hmm? That I'm this and I'm that and I'm that. Hmm? Hmm? That I'm a guru and that I'm a lawyer and I'm an architect and I'm a hmm? whatever. Yeah. There's no difference. I do my job the best way I can, and you do your job the best way you can. So where's the difference? The key lies in the best way you can, not what you do. And always trying to benefit. Maid of ours, Lena, we treat her like a child, our own child. No, no education, nothing but always so willing. Sometimes I pass through the living room or the kitchen or whatever, watching her work. And as she is, for example, polishing the furniture, hmm? the amount of devotion that is seen there. It seems as if she has merged into the furniture, the cupboard, the table or whatever. Hmm? You see the margins of a totally uneducated person that can't even write her name. Hmm? So all these qualifications of having the greatest wisdom or being the greatest architect or mechanic or engineer means nothing if the devotion is not there. And as you know, Charity begins at home. Devotion begins at home. Yes. So we start there. So do not, when it comes to the individuality and universality, do not be concerned with the coping of it. Because you have been prepared already where coping uh, seems uh, None coping. Hmm? It becomes copulating. We know if it is required, a natural flow. Experience that sometimes. I'm talking of experience. Hmm.